So um, we'll go through this. Um, maybe I'll show this. You think this is such a nice pen? Key. So what are we doing? Right. Um, okay. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, I know it's late in some parts of the world, but I am here in sunny Dallas with Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who is um, who is helping uh, Angie? Angie's the production manager on this manual, and um, she has to deal with my madness. Because as her husband said, he is you know he's going to change every little thing, <laughs> and she's had to put up with that. No 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 no, move that half an inch away. Yes. No 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 no, half a degree. So um, trying to get this manual to look so to be so clean and open. There is a lot of copy in it. Um, uh, we, d we opted for not putting the copy into prose, so a lot of the copy is bullet pointed simply for space reasons. It's a manual, it's a working manual, um, which means you, you can spill stuff on it. <laughs> it's not a book. Um, that will come in a couple of years because there's so many new and amazing discoveries that have come out of this manual which will need a lot more um, information, a lot more space. Um, one of the things that I look at, oh, where's that thing? Uh, I know the last time we did, we did this, um, you ended up with a reverse image. So what I'll probably do is I'll swap an image around. Ah, here we go. I'm gonna swap this around just to show you. So this is, um, this is something that I've been working on, as you can see, we're constructing flourishes, page of flourishes, brush lettering, structure of the letters. Obviously, the most important understanding is seeing how the yin and yang work. Hello, Anne. Oh, I miss you. Uh, guys, Anne Bancroft is one of my best friends. She works at the v &A and she is in charge of uh, second in charge of paper conservation. And her work is amazing. Fantastic bookbinder. Um, and she loves Trinidadian, West Indian food. So um, I'll see you when I get home. Uh, right. So what I wanted to do was, this is one of the most amazing things in this, in this manual. So we have a typical H and I'm showing you how, and those of you who have the grids, the H is two parallelograms wide. It, in this version of the H, the um, line of universal beauty turns into a horizontal line and it then turns into a loop and back down into a line of universal beauty. This is three by three parallelograms and this is three by three parallelograms. Now from a technical point of view that works really well but you might not have that much space on a page. The next one shows that the H can be constructed by two parallelograms high and four parallelograms long, or four parallelograms long and two parallelograms wide. Then this is a three by three. So that's three parallelograms high and wide and three parallelograms high and wide, and of course, two. And then this is a interlaced one where we go one and a two and a three and four and four down the center it's a little bit off and then this shows how the parallel how the H actually looks like a flourish one and two and three and four and five none of these will have ductus marks on them so those of you who need to uh, remember remember ductus is the stroke number and order and um, so we're not putting that on this this is on the variations page and then we're also looking at things like how to cross the top of a T different variations to cross the top of a T um, so, <laughs> and <laughs> stop that West Indian speak. <laughs> and then we look at, so those of you who looked at the video earlier on, um, the video I posted, I looked at writing in reverse, writing, mirror writing, mirror writing as opposed to writing in reverse. So this is writing in reverse. You'll find this in the universal penman. And what they do here is they start at the end of the letter. That's why the deposition of weight is in all the opposite places. It's an absolute nightmare to do. 
because you have to understand the balance of the letter really well. The D is so difficult because you're starting here. So you go up and over and around and pressure and out and back and up. Um, as you can see, there are a few tries of Ds. Um, and the F is really cool. And I've also shown some of my upright copper plate script, which I've had, which I've used in the studio for about 20 years. All right, so today we're going to look at something um, that I think is really, really important for you to, to see, for you to understand. Well said, Debbie, and that's exactly what I am talking about today. So for you lefties out there, I have, oh look, who is that? It's a Felicia. Mm -hmm. um, so for you lefties out there, um, Felicia, is Elise with you? This is my little. <laughs> right. I've developed a different handhold. Um, and the handhold is really, really important for you to understand. I will do a detailed um, analysis of this in a video in the studio to show people how this works. Um, now, after 35 years of writing, um, I've done a fair deal of damage to my hands. Consequently, when my hand is in a um, is in a position that is incorrect it really hurts it doesn't just sort of hurt it really really hurts so I can tell by different handholds what causes the most damage over a protracted period and um, those of you just starting off in calligraphy um, Welcome to the calligraphy field. Yay! Uh, you are in for a surprise because you will probably think that you're starting off with a pen and a pencil and some paper. And soon enough, you will end up with loads and loads of tools and materials. You might even have to stop buying shoes <laughs> to fuel your calligraphy lust of tools and materials. Um, besides, calligraphy tools and materials pick up less space. Um, so the, the handhold that lots of people have can actually be quite destructive. By squeezing the tool and gripping it too tightly, um, it can cause a lot of strain on the ligaments and tendons in the hand. Um, and these can, can dramatically damage the wrists over the course of, of your practice. So one of the things I, 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 I've been very conscious of is how do I help people not end up in the same position I'm in? Um, how do I deal with the pain? Well, I, I trained as a Reiki master and I do Reiki on my thumb and my hand every night. And that really does help me to sort of deal with the, the pain. Um, and it helps to deal with some of the repairing of the damaged muscles. Um, so, I started to think, I started to look at different handholds that would um, allow less pain. And this is what I've come up with. So um, Angie and I are going to work around here because I need to, I'm going to do this for right-handers first and then I'm going to do it for left-handers. Um, so Angie's going to hold the phone we're going to have a fair deal of back and forth movement. Um, you get shoulder pain probably because your desk is too high. So that, that's an issue to deal with, your relationship of the, the chair to the desk. So this again is something I talk about in the manual. I talk about where the desk needs to be in relation to the chair and how high it is in relation to, to you. Because you know if you're, if you're a short person and your desk is tall and the chair is low, then you'll be holding the shoulder up and that causes pain all the way here. So it causes it along the back of the neck um, and along the scapular ridge into the shoulder. That can also run all the way down the back of the arm through to the back of the elbow, across the front of the forearm and up into the thumb and the forefinger. So it's, 
you know, if you're getting shoulder pains now, you, you need to really reconsider the way that you're sitting. Um, are you slouching? Are you sitting up? You know, as you notice, you know, I, I don't sit like this. I sit like this when I'm writing, um, which means that I am a lot taller. Um, and that really, really helps. Okay, so hold off on your questions because you're, you're, I need to get on with this. Um, so just pay attention to what, to what I'm going to do here. Uh, if you're right-handed, don't type, just pay attention to this. Um, if you're left-handed, save your questions until after so that I, I concentrate on this. All right, um, so here we go. So one of the first things you have to remember um, is this. Never try to change your pen hold dramatically too quickly because you lose control and you feel destabilized. What, what I suggest is this. Hold the pencil like you normally hold it. Now, when we're doing copper plate script, <clears throat> those of you who saw the video earlier on today, um, please go to the profile and have a look at the video. I look at writing the letters in, in the opposite direction, like mirror writing. Um, but what you notice is the pen is facing that direction. Most people, when they hold a tool, that's where the tool is facing. In order to do copper plate script, the tines of the nib have to face the axis of the script. So the way to do that is to turn the page, so you're writing sort of upside down, or you turn yourself and the page. That means you're writing there. Now, there is another set of angles. You can turn yourself in the opposite angle and the page in the opposite angle. And that sort of creates a complement of angles that helps to get to the correct axis. Um, that's, that's really important to consider when you're writing. Um, I might need to change this name, but actually, I'm not going to use the name. Uh, actually, I will use it. I'll get something else. Um, so that, that's a really important place. The next thing to consider is where is this piece of paper? Because some of you like to write here. Well, if you're writing here, you, you can't see what you're doing. So you have to look up under yourself. So I tend to suggest writing about there. Some of you might want, want to write over there. So I write. I write. Yeah. I don't have to do this because I can see where I'm writing. My hand is not in front of where I'm writing. I'm not here. If you're here, you're looking down the shaft of the tool, which means, well, you can't really see the tips. You end up doing this. And as soon as you move out of position, you get neck ache, shoulder ache, or back ache. So back ache tends to come from you leaning to one side. So I've also developed a slightly different hold uh, foot position. So what I do is the non, the writing leg, so my right leg is perpendicular to the floor, and my left leg is back on the ball, not like this, but just there. You cannot do this with shoes on. If you're going to do it with shoes on, you need to use uh, trainers, but don't use boots, don't use anything with heels because it will hurt the arch of the foot. And that allows me to lean forward to the writing. Now, why am I leaning forward? When you use a broad edge nib, most of us use a, an angle board to write on. That assists in being able to, 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 to have more uh, visual perception of the surface. Well, on a flat surface, you're seeing it at a fairly uh, complex angle. So, you know, you're looking at this at about, what's that, about 45 degrees, between 45 and, and, and uh, 35 degrees. So the script is already at 55 degrees. So you're adding another angle to the script. By leaning forward, keeping the chest up, shoulders back, you know, uh, extend the spine, that'll help to sort out some of your back aches because it'll help to use your transverse abdominals and make your body work properly. You are leaning forward, but the vertical leg is stopping you from falling over. And so that puts you in a really good position to work but you have to find where this spot is for you. So it might be 
just a little bit off, usually about five to 10 degrees off the, the, um, the center. So it's just there. So I just have to turn my head just a little bit. Now that's a really important position to be in. So you know that when you're holding a tool, you're doing this. So let's do this in relation to some paper, piece of paper with line. You're doing this. So you're facing there. How do you get to there? Well, you, you can't do this. <laughs> so what do you do? Right? So what I suggest is this. Now, this is where the muscle, knowledge of muscular movement is really important. We're told to hold a pen like this to do Spencerian and decorative flourishing. Flourishing is held on the side like this. Well, I know that's difficult to do because you're accustomed to holding the tool like this. But you need to get onto this muscle. So how do you deal with that? Well, don't roll over onto the flat of the muscle. Think of the arm split into two. And this is also part of that muscle. If you roll over, to about there, you're still facing there, you're still on half of that muscle, you can bounce on that muscle. You're not on the whole of it, otherwise holding the pen will be a little bit of an issue. And by rolling over onto that side of the muscle, it allows you to do, now notice the pen is, the pencil is still facing that direction. I can still do muscular movement. Now, the new hold I've developed is this. When you are rolling over onto the muscle, do not change this. Do not change your hand hold. I want you to keep this hand hold. Deal with this first. The next thing, once you've gotten to that point, is to deal with this. And all I'm asking you to do is this. Rotate the arm over, because you're on the half muscle, and gently move the pencil into a vertical position. I'm not asking you to do this, I'm not asking you to do this, I'm just asking you to rotate ever so slightly. Try and stay relaxed and comfortable. If the pencil falls out of your hand, pick it up with a non-writing hand, Put it back into the hand. Try and stay as relaxed as you possibly can. Hold the pencil lightly and try and get it to be vertical. Now, once it's vertical, you can still produce the whole arm movement, but with the pencil in a vertical fashion. Why am I asking you to do this? Well, if you are here, and you want to go there, you go from here, to here, to here. Already, the reservoir is facing there. I want the reservoir to go there. That to that is really big, but that to that isn't. And so you then compensate for that by turning the page. Look, reservoir at 55 degrees. Notice handhold hasn't changed. I'm not squeezing the tool. I'm not gripping it too hard. Those of you who have a death grip, take a pencil with an eraser, preferably not a propelling pencil. So Gaynor Goff taught me this at Rygate. I, I mean, she didn't teach me because I never had this problem, but she taught other students. And she said, if you squeeze the tool so hard, what you need to do is Get a tool in the non-writing hand with an eraser on the back, preferably just a normal pencil. Um, and you want to be able to press just over where you're writing. What that does is it transfers some of the squeezing of the tool to squeezing of the pencil. And the eraser acts as a shock absorber. So any shaking is absorbed by the rubber. It's not a magic pill. It will not happen immediately overnight. It will take time to eventually transfer all of the stress because you know some of you hold a tool and it's like you're trying to get blood out of the tool and um, and you just have to relax just put if you if that's how you hold a tool practice with this put the tool down take a little breath breathe for five seconds pick the tool up you know you might find that the 
40 minutes you've set aside for practice for the next couple of weeks is retraining how to do this. This new hole that I've developed is magnificent because it affords you so much more ability with the holder. Also, for those of you who've been complaining about, oh my gosh, I always use a bleak holder. I don't know how I'm going to manage to move up to a straight holder. The world's going to end, chicken little, chicken little. Um, this will allow you to translate, transition from the oblique holder into the straight holder. Um, using the oblique holder with this hold is slightly different. I'm not really going to talk about it because I want you to work on this straight holder problem. Now, the tool is facing that position. By pivoting, so I've moved from here to there, I'm going to pivot on the little finger so you can either pivot on the edge like this. Notice how vertical the tool is. Remember the steeper the tool, you don't want to be at 90, you want to be at about you know, sort of 70 degrees. The steeper the tool, the easier it is to write small. If you want to write big letters, you flatten the tool. Notice, look at my hand, right? I'm not squeezing, it's just bent, just there. So let's look at it from the top as well, Angie. So, all right, so what you want to do is, you can see the letters through here. Now, I'm going to write, so what you're doing is, you're holding the tool there. If you want to write larger, because in order to create a, a thicker shade or a larger swell stroke, doing it at this height causes the tines to bend. Doing it at this height does not. Now, notice, look at where I am. So I want you to look. Let's see if we can get right on it. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So I would write like this. And because my arm is on the desk, I'm not leaning on the arm, I can move quite easily. That's why my flourishes are so smooth. Now, I'm going to go flatter if you want to write wider strokes. Notice, and eventually I'm on these two fingers. So I, I tend to curl, I tend to put the flat of this finger here so that I can go down and I still have the support. Can you see that? So it's being supported. The main thing you have to remember is the support. You have to get the support. If there's no support, you can't do the writing. And so I move from, so this is a wrist movement. Now I'm moving up with my fingers, but I'm coming down and I'm changing over and I want to do a flourish. I'm changing over from a wrist movement into whole arm movement. You cannot move from your fingers to your whole arm. You have to move up the arm in increments. So you can move from the fingers to the wrist, and then the wrist to the whole arm movement, or you can move from the wrist to the whole arm movement. You cannot go from the fingers to the whole arm movement. It's can do it, it just takes a lot of practice. Right, so how does that translate into a brush hold? Um, actually, let me show you what happens with. So, for this, I've just taken about 10 sheets of copy paper, I've taped it together very neatly. Try and be a little bit crazy when you're doing this kind of thing cut the two ends off and then I go so it creates a bit of cushioning which gives the paper lift so what I'm going to do here is I am going to dip make sure you dip so look I'm dipping beyond the eye let's just clean that out you see the eye there? I'm going to dip and fill up to the eye. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap. I'm not doing this, I'm not wiping it off. If you wipe it off, obviously you wipe off the ink you need. It's just a little tap and any excess comes off. Um, and then I'm going to show, so if we have that hand hold, so let's look at it from the top.
So we have So you, you see the movement with the wrist, up with the wrist, and moving to the arm. Sorry about that messy flourish. Okay, so I then want you to take that hold and apply it to this tool. So this is a few day eight, uh, made by Kurotaki. And so I'm not, I don't know if you noticed, I don't hold down here. I don't hold down here. I actually hold up here. Because a smaller movement up here makes for a larger movement down here. So I am not doing all the writing. The tool is helping me do the writing. If you feel that you have to do the writing yourself, then good for you. So let's just put this in. This here. Just hold it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now this is this is where it changes, okay? So I'm not holding the tool here, because if you hold a brush down at the front, let's So I'm holding the brush down at the front. Look at what happens to the bristles. Do you see how the bristles are rolling? Actually, maybe I'll do it with a color. Always cover your brushes back. And always make sure the largest, the little clip faces the text. Now, look at this, right? Look at the tip of the brush. I'm on the tip, right? But I'm down at the front. Most people hold it like this, and when they write, they roll on the tip, ruin the tip of the brush. Remember to press, twist, pull, and lift to get it back to point. So I'm on the still. I'm on the tip. So I'm using my hold, and then I'm writing. Look, you're pushing. Can you see you're pushing on the bristles? Look how the bristles are rolling. Now. Some brushes are made to stand up to that kind of thing. But most brushes are not made to cope with that. Now, by holding the brush vertically, so we can come back a little bit more, and holding it, so I'm not here, I'm here, a little bit higher, the wrist the wrist is doing the movement. So the wrist comes down as the arm is doing the pulling. So we get this. So look at, look at the wrist and one, and the arm is moving, and two, and three. And that allows you to produce, for those of you who do modern calligraphy, a much sharper letter. You get a better, a better sharpness just around there. Um, rather than that, you get really, you, you really get full usage of the tool. Now, let's look at left hand hold. So, for the left hand hold, I need to move around. Just give us a little bit of time here. So for a lefty who's a mirror righty, you're facing, you see this, this madness that people do, this crazy hold that you have to sort of do all of this. That is, as soon as, look at what's happening here. When you do this, look at the tension here and here, and I can feel the tension here. Now, I, I would not even chance this hold with my right hand because I would, I would be in so much pain. 
I don't know how you guys do this, but you, you need to consider adjusting that hold. But if you go from here, let's take a pencil. If you go from here over onto the hearth and you relax the grip and you go to the vertical, you can very easily move into that. Now I'm not left-handed, so I'm sorry that my these look like spirographs, but you you can see the smoothness. Uh, for those of you who do this, you can still instead of doing this, you can quite easily hold the tool upright. So it does help to cor correct a crooked hold, which can actually be quite painful here, um, and then that will move from there to there. So let's look at a crooked hole. Let's look at it upright. Now, how do you get the tines to face the script? Hold the top of the tool, a little bit. Hold the top of the tool and just turn it. There, look, the tines are facing that. So you can produce, let's get some ink. Debbie says she doesn't do that. Okay, Debbie, we, we will deal with you separately. When I come up, you will feed me and I will teach you how to write. So you can do this. I haven't practiced my left-handed writing for a long time, so really sorry that it's so scratchy. But also the under the, the substrate, the table is, is is quite hard. Um, for those of you who write like this, all you have to consider is, instead of doing this, again, what you will be doing is you'll be writing, again, you need to turn the angle of the tool, so you might be writing, you might be writing upside down. Now, I'm not talking about holes for tools for pens I really want to talk about this brush tool so again from a vertical position you're going to let the wrist do the writing do the pressing so you just need a, li a little bit more practice on this Um, and if you need to write this way, obviously, it takes a little getting used to. So you're sort of writing upside down. But once you feel the tool working, it really does help. But it's all about this wrist action, getting the wrist to do the work. Because you know what? The fingers are busy. They're holding the tool. If you give them something else to do, you will run into problems. I'm going to switch back to the right-hand side. Let's just go back on this side. That's a question on which nib you were using. So I'm using a Hunt 22B. Um, I really like using Hunts because they are, let's go back to this side. They are robust. Um, they're really sharp. So this is a, this is one that I've been using whilst I've been here in Dallas, producing the artwork for lots of the pages for the manual. Um, and in the manual, I actually did, uh, there is a section, a, a page in the manual where I talk about and compare um, some letters that I've written with an oblique holder and with a, a straight holder. So you can see what the differences are and some of the issues that you will run into. So I know sometimes you're trying to write and you, you're looking at it and you can feel that something's different. 
Um, so this this sort of talks you through that. Um, the brush, I really want you to understand this brush hold because it is what will help you to produce So we have a fairly narrow A. So we need to do this from above. So maybe maybe we do it from there. So just sort of above there. So use the other hand to hold. Remember the camera is oh yeah, the camera's on this side. So just 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 hold it. So you can have a really, really fine line that does this. Or you can do this. Or you can do this. So I'm going to vary the weight on every outer spiral. I'm using my arm and I'm using the width of the brush. question of which pens would you recommend a beginner start using? Okay, so I, I can't really talk about that. That, that that's, that's quite a big question. And I am specifically looking at the brush here. So by pivoting on the wrist and on the, the little bone here, I think it's called the pisciform bone, and the little finger, you can really get some quite Astonishing. You might need to go a little closer for this. So, and of course, you could do it. And but what I'm doing is I'm allowing the tip of the brush to trail so it acts as a shock absorber. Um, some of you might want to do brush writing like this, or that, but I tend to prefer no, sorry, Let me just do this again. Now press, twist, turn, and pull. Notice I sort of go down and then back out. Um, and then, you know, again, same hold, but do you see how I went? Oh, sorry about that hot spot there. Um, so it might be easier to show you with a nice bright color. So this is a Kurtaki Cambio. And the other pen was? The other pen was a Fude 8. So the Fude 8s are much easier to get your hands on. So they... I, I showed this at a... I showed this as a, as a demonstration before. So what I'm doing is I'm just, and again, I'm still using the tip of this brush. So look at this, right? I need to get really close to this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline just the top part. Then I'm going to underline the bottom bit with a weight. And it's all being done, you know, just taking my time. So, you know, you could apply pressure, you could produce a beautiful hairline, or you could produce a really thin hairline. All right, I think that's sort of it.
Oh, hard work. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much for um, staying on so long. Um, and I hope that was helpful. Um, how about a flexible brush? felt tip brush? Oh, so the felt tip brushes. So we have a, so what I'm going to use is a, so these are the zig scroll and brush markers. Um, let's just grab this back a little bit. Flip this. With some of the felt tips, so I tend to refer to these as spongy tip rather than a felt tip because they're quite spongy. The reason I like using the zig markers is because the tip doesn't fall apart. You can use it like this. So you can actually write sort of copper plate with it. Again, look, I'm still using the wrist, the handhold that I've come up with. It gives you a really nice sharp letter. Can use it for modern calligraphy. If you want to do that. So you want to go down and around and down. I, I can't do this because it really hurts my hand to do this pressing and rolling inside here. If I am going to do that, you might want to go back a little bit. I would go. So look, I'm using my whole wrist to produce this movement. Um, I tend to only use these for where I change. And so I'm changing not only the angle of the tool, but also the angle of the page. So I hope that answers your question. And for those of you who want to spend some money, because I know you all love spending money on tools, uh, I don't know what the name of this is, but this is one of the higher end Kurtaki brushes. This is one of the fountain pen brushes I take out with me. Tips on a point of bed brush pen work. Sorry. Do you have any tips on pointed brush pen work? What do you mean, what pointed brush pen work? That's what somebody's asking. Okay, I've just done a ton of tips on pointed brush pen. So you need to look at this whole thing. All right, let's grab this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. As I, <laughs> I'm just going through the same thing. Um, thanks so much for your time. <laughs> Yes, I, I will give you this brush pen, provided you, you know, bind the first 10 copies of the manual for me beautifully. <laughs> um, and a brilliant book, book binder. And some of the stuff she does is, is quite spectacular. Um, so thank you all very much. Um, practice with the hold. Those of you with death grips, get a pencil, or rather, don't buy really expensive pencils. Buy a pack of really cheap pencils with erasers on the back because I know some of you are so stressed that you will break the pencils with the stress that you're going through. You might need to go and see a psychiatrist if you're breaking pencils. Um, if you do break a pencil, be really careful because it could, it could injure you. Um, try the hold. The manual has a section. Um, it's only really sort of three pages. Four, four two double page spreads. Um, I'm glad the pencil tip might have changed your life casual. Um, the, the uh, what was I going to say? Um, try the hold to assist with the, 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 the squeezing of the tool because that, that, that can cause you a lot of damage. Then allow yourself time to rotate over. I know, those, I know a lot of you are trying to learn whole arm movement and it's a nightmare to learn, especially if you're looking at the historical sources and you can't make that leap. So this is a halfway house between <clears throat> the leap used by the American uh, penman in the golden age of American penmanship. Uh, Debbie was just on, so um, she's the president of um, I Am Path. So you can look up I Am Path, which is I-A-M-P-E-T-H. You can go to their website and you could download tons of tons of beautifully scanned manuals um, from the American age of gold golden age of American penmanship. 
uh, for which we have Joe Vitola to thank for quite a lot of those. Um, have a look at Joe's site, so he has some great stuff on, on engrossing script. Uh, there are tons of people to look at, I'm sure lots of you, so thank you very much for posting that up, uh, Debbie. Um, I'm sure lots of you know lots of pen men, um, there's some great people out there, there's like Kay Goodman and um, uh, Nina Tran and uh, David Grimes and you know, tons of people. Um, uh, Bianca, Bianca Mascora is really good, she, especially on modern stuff, her modern stuff has a real sort of vitality to it. And it shows a really deep understanding of, um, of letter forms and movement. So you don't get this really sort of rigid, hard script. It's really, really sensitive. Um, and of course, Susan Cunningham. Um, and this video I'll post on uh, my business page, which is Paul Antonio Scribe. Um, and I'll also post it on YouTube so you guys can revisit it and look at it. Again, um, for the manual, we will do some videos for supporting materials um, and we do plan to have a, a basically a, a call-in day where you could just hassle me about your issues with the manual. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of information and it's a little bit difficult to get through um, if you're trying to rush through it so just take your time when you get it. Uh, don't forget um, the link in the bio has a link to signing up for the manual. We do need you to fill this in with your first name and surname in the correct fields preferably um, and the country is really important. Your location and your country is really important. Um, I'm asking you not to share the guidelines because we need you to fill this information in so that I could work out where where most of the people are based and have contact information for them so we can set up classes um, and come around and teach you guys for real. Um, okay, that's enough of me waffling on. I actually need to get some work done. Have a great day. Thank you very much for your time um, and practice well not hard okay and and